Hey everybody, what's going on? Your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza here. I've been out of the office for a while, and uh, it's nice to be back, and welcome back. So let's play some more Gran Turismo 3, the ultimate driving simulator. As I said, I, I've been away from being able to record for a little while. I've been house-sitting with my fiancé over at her mom's place. And, uh, you know, you can't necessarily lug all the stuff over there. And so I just took a few days off. It's nice to be able to, you know, kind of step away for a little bit and recharge the batteries. And now that I am back, I have stories. And stories are fun. So I missed you guys, by the way. I, you know, I, I love... Being able to, uh, you know, you guys are you guys are family too, and so even though I don't physically see any of you guys, you guys are still family to me. So we are we are back playing some more of this, and we have stories to talk about. And last time we tried to clean out this thing and get all all gold trophies in it, I'll be damned if that fucking Rome circuit would let me have it. <laughs> I went in there the first time we did the the regular race when we were actually doing the championship, couldn't do it. Went back with uh, with the, the GT40 race car that I beefed up a little bit. Couldn't do it. If I can't do it with this, oh my god, am I going to be pissed off. <laughs> Not really the kind of entrance you want to have back into the circuit here by having another Stygian failure that you can chalk up for the board. But I think, I think that this should be able to get the job done. I mean, you know, in a very similar way that, you know, when it comes to gaming... You know, graphics don't always make the game. Well, to, to draw a comparison here, horsepower doesn't always make the car. You know, you don't necessarily have to have 900 horsepower to be able to win a race. You know, sometimes you just gotta know what you're doing. It's not the size of the penis, it's how crooked it is. <laughs> Which makes no sense at all, but we're still gonna roll with that, and these guys are still gonna make this an ordeal, aren't they? They are going to try their damnedest to make this a problem. Even though I do have the conceivable advantage in every major category, they are still going to be a pain in the cock. But it's okay. Because as long as I can get myself A straight away, they don't stand a chance in heaven or hell or any other stop in between there, depending on what religion you believe in and other, you know, whatever. <sighs> so... I went uh, so okay. Let, let me let me get some talking point out of the way with this whole eclipse bullshit. You know, I understand that it's not something that happens all the time, and so there's there's the allure of that. But okay, so apparently not every state's going to get to look at this, and so people are flocking to wherever they can because everybody wants to get a piece of the pie, and so Oregon is one of the uh, Oregon's one of the big you know, viewpoint states to be able to check this out, and so we've had people migrating from all over the place super early, by the way. I don't know I don't know why people feel like they need to come over here now to camp out for it. It's not until the freaking 21st. That's not for another, you know, like when it started happening, like people have been already coming over here and like making reservations and all this stuff like three weeks in advance. It's just the fucking sun and the moon, you know? I mean, like you can you can go to like any grocery store here in Oregon and you can buy like the crazy eclipse glasses which are basically 3D glasses that they cut the lenses out and basically looks like they put some very transparent tin foil into them and uh and it just it seems and it just seems like there's so much fucking hullabaloo over it you know like my mom's like I don't get it like I I I I watched the solar eclipse in in, uh, in, what was it, I think shit, like, 1977, and she's like, and it was no big deal. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's cool and everything, but, I mean, it's nothing to go completely balls to the wall over, and the reason why I say this is that I went with, so I, I went with, uh, I went to the coast with Michaela yesterday, and, uh, when we went down, we went down to, uh, down to Depot Bay and just kind of up and down the coast, and there were a whole bunch of gift shops that were selling all this Eclipse gear. Like, they're selling, like, Eclipse t-shirts and sweatshirts and, you know, like, fridge magnets and all this stuff. And it's like, why? You know, like, who who realistically is going to buy a shirt that says, 
you know, I, I survived the solar eclipse, 8, 21, 17. It's like, it's not like it was like this crazy world event where, you know, people were dying in mass or something. Unless they were dumb enough to look up at it without any glasses on, but I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I don't, I don't understand, I don't understand the draw, you know? It just, it just, it, it just, it, it doesn't appeal to me. Like, am I still going to check it out? Sure. The part, the part that sucks is that there's going to be so many people here in, in Salem, especially. There's going to be so many people here in Salem that are going to be, like, crowding all the state parks because apparently there's some thing in effect that that during, like, the, during the eclipse weekend, like, for a number of days, all the state parks, they're just going to allow people to just to sleep in them. As long as you don't bring a tent, you can just sleep out in the park. You know, you can just, like, it, it's going to be, like, this totally crazy park orgy going on throughout the entire state here. And, uh... And it's going to be super, super backed up. Like, the traffic is going to be at a dead standstill all over the place. Because everybody's going to try to get a prime viewing angle for this. So, like, every parking lot's going to be a shit show. All the parks are going to be a shit show. The highways, I would assume, at one point or another, people are just going to stop and pull over on the side of the freeway. And just, you know, get out and look or whatever. It's just, it's going to be just this horrifying mass of people and, and like we, we've got people that are migrating here from all over the place we went to the Tillamook cheese factory because cheese is amazing whether it chokes your asshole into submission or not I got a bag of cheese curds <laughs> and I also got a brick of of uh, cracked pepper it was like a black peppercorn white cheddar which oh boy I can't wait to feast on some of that and then I also got one it was uh, it was like haban it was like habanero cheddar jack or something like that it's so good um, but we, we went to, we went to this place, we went to the cheese factory, and I swear to God, half of the cars, half of them, at this fairly sizable venue, half of the cars in that parking lot were from Utah, half of them, and I mean, it's not like it's, you know, it's not like it's, hey, well, it's like a one hour drive to get there, I mean, that's a, that's a sizable thing, and unless it was like some crazy new yearly event that we just so happened to stumble upon, <laughs> Welcome to the very first annual Mormons and Cheese, you know, <laughs> where you get to learn all the the great facets of, of the Mormon religion while we get to feast on the greatness of cheese and ice cream while we <laughs> fall into some extremely destructive uh, digestive failure known as cheese overload. Even though, hey, I'm going to say one thing right their ice cream is, is, oh... Oh, it's good. And their little cafe is also super good. I went there, you know, after, you know, we went through the gift shop and all this stuff. Um, had grilled cheese sandwich, which they use two different types of cheese in. And instead of just tomato soup, they give you tomato bisque. Yeah. A little bit different texture. It's a, it's a lot creamier than just your average tomato soup. But they did something that I did not expect them to do. And I... If I ever do grilled cheese sandwiches with tomato soup after after this, I will do it the ex I, I'm going to do it this way from now on because it's such a small detail, but holy shit is it so good when you do it. You take the tomato soup or the bisque or whatever type of tomato e liquid that you're going to dip the sandwich into and instead of just, you know, just having the soup, you put cheese curds into the soup. And it sounds so simplistic. But it's fucking amazing, because every once in a while, you'll go in there to get some soup, and you'll get a nice, soft piece of, like, kind of, sort of, melty cheese in there, and, oh, man, and it's just, it's, it's like, oh, the, the, it's the texture, you know? It's the smell, if uh, Agent Smith had an opinion on it. But, oh, it's so fucking good. It really is. I can't, I can't even explain enough how delicious it is. Um... So, and now that's finally out of the way. Finally, we have golds there to look at. It's, it, it makes me happy to, to view it with my own face. So this is what we're going to do now. Uh, now that we go back into the little thing here. We are going to jump into our NSX Type R that we bought many moons ago. We're going we're gonna to beefcake it up a little bit. Because uh, there's uh, the Type R meeting, and I would like to use it here. Um, I... Feel like there's probably some other cars that we could be that we could use, but I'm gonna go with this. Seems like a seems like a 
like a thing that we can go along with. Already have that. Already have that. Um, don't have a port polish. We can do port polish. It seems like a seems like a half good thing to do there. We could do full engine balancing. That's not bad either. Get us up to 410. Um, we could do. I already have the racing chimp. Like I'm I'm apprehensive. Well, it only goes up to 486. We have a lot of money. Who cares? You know, we got we have that kind of disposable income to use. Might as well at least put it to use a little bit. Um, sports brakes definitely gonna do that. Seems like a pretty good idea. Now that we've got close to you know 500 horsepower, that would be a fairly decent idea. Um, let's do tires. I would definitely want to do some mediums, just because I don't know how many laps are gonna be in this race anyways. Um, and we'll also do a couple of lightweight stagings here. That might make that worthwhile as well. Okay, that should be fine. I can't, I can't in all likelihood imagine, whoops, um, that they're gonna throw some, really? That they're gonna throw some kind of crazy curveball at me that I, that I did not see. That's gonna be fine. I'm not gonna worry about that. Okay, so let's, let's go race. Uh, and I think it's also a, I think it's also like a cup tournament too, so you know how that goes. Um, where are you at, my lovely? There you are. Yeah, it's a little five, a little five joint. So the cars they want, yeah, a, the Accord. Obviously, we're gonna win the the battle there. We should win the battle of the Integra. Should win that battle. I mean, the only thing I can imagine would be maybe the Spoon Civic. The Spoon Civic and the Integra, or just other NSXs, are going to be the only things I could imagine that would really hold a torch to our, you know, virtually fully beefed out car in, in this situation. So, eh, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, dude, it was fun. It was it was super fun. And then also went uh, went back to Rogue Brewery to get more to get more tasty beer, and I did. Uh, they have they had a new cold brew. It was like a cold brew uh, cold brew. Uh, IPA, and it's delicious. I've been I've been really kind of slowly building my my uh, you know my taste for for cold brew because it just it has a slightly different taste than just regular coffee, mainly because it's not nearly as acidic, and I and I really like that, um, especially because my my stomach really does not do um, it, it does not do coffee super well, especially early in the day. The cold brew coffee, I can have that any time. It's just, there's something completely different about, you know, the, the way it makes me feel by Michael Jackson. Um, and I don't mean that in a weird Neverland Ranch kind of way. Well, getting that getting that third stage of Turbo Kit really opened this thing up. Uh, we should have absolutely no problem in this championship for really the rest of the way. <laughs> just taking this at pure face value, and I'm and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. We've had we've had some struggle the last few episodes, which in some cases has been kind of funny, and in some cases has been kind of not. So I'm okay with uh, you know my first my first time back in in you know close to a week, uh, you know getting getting some necessary stuff here. Another thing I can bring up uh, since since you know we're kind of relaxing here a little bit, I can tell you another thing that I've been experimenting with a little bit, and it's not necessarily something on the channel, but it is something that I'm maybe looking into doing as far as like another system's worth of games that I've not really you know had the opportunity of diving into before is I've been you know I, I watch a lot of episodes I, I watch a lot of, of different you know of different things from you know game consoles that I've never played before I've kind of gone over this before in, in a sense and uh, that's kind of when I started messing around with things like the the Sega SG 1000 or the Master System or, you know, things like Wonder Swan Color and just kind of some various ones that I've not played around with. I, I downloaded an emulator and a ROM set for, for it was like a Japanese computer, uh, you know, console, if you will. I guess a computer and a console, you can't really necessarily lump that into the same sentence, but you, you know what I'm saying. And I, I downloaded a whole load of stuff for the, uh, for the MSX computer. And uh, conceivably... It kind of it was a it was a computer that kind of was around in like the mid to late 80s was really where it, it kind of shined. And I think it, it may have had a couple of games in like the very early 90s at best. I think that's kind of right near the end of its lifespan. So it really it did okay uh, as far as I understand as far as sales numbers go. But it was a cool little it was a cool system. Uh, you know they they did a lot of a lot of arcade ports of games. 
But they did have some some cool, unique uh, like adventure games, and so they had some really good shoot 'em up games. And, and I've been kind of fiddle farting around with, with some of those a little bit. And and I really at some point want to do a couple of games from that system here on the channel if I can find a good quality way to, to get some uh, some game capture done for it. Because it's it's a fun thing. Like the the graphics in not necessarily are are mind-bogglingly great, but as I discussed earlier, it's not necessarily about, uh, it's not necessarily about the graphics, it's about, you know, it's about the gameplay itself. Is, is it a, is it a good quality game that feels good when you play it? Certainly. Because again, you know, back in those times it was really more about using your imagination to, you know, connect with the game itself. It, it, it didn't, it made you do some of the work with your own head. It, it wasn't just all about like, oh, well, this game just looks like fucking real life, and it's basically like playing a movie. You know, for, with those older games, it kind of made you take that extra step and, and, you know, pull that extra dimension out of your own out of your own head to be like, hey, well, you know, it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a lot more crude and rough around the edges, but it kind of, because you're exerting so much energy into it, it kind of helps you insert yourself into the environment a little more, you know? You kind of get to do a little bit more of that, but... And dude, some of these games are fun, and I, I, as far as the shoot 'em ups category goes, they had a couple of really cool things in there. I, I can't think of the name of the one, um, of like, the, the marquee one for the system. I, it's like, it's escaping me right now, but it was really, really cool. Very fun, very hard. Um, but the power-up system was interesting. Very excited about it, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing a little bit more of that. Um, so just throwing some things out there, you know. I, I love I love getting acquainted with a lot of these systems that I never had the opportunity of playing with as a kid. Because the MSX, I don't think, was ever released in North America, as far as I'm aware. Just unless you ordered one from Japan and you know brought it over and, and had all the necessary you know things to, to operate it here, then obviously you probably weren't going to have one. You know, kind of same thing goes with like uh, like the BBC Micro and, you know, the Amiga wasn't necessarily a big thing over here in, you know, in America and so kind of a kind of a nippy thing to now that emulation is such a big thing anymore that you're being able to have that opportunity of, of being able to acquire a nice library of games from a system that you would have otherwise really never had a chance to play. Super, super cool. I, 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 I am really, really having a lot of fun with that. Probably something I'm gonna do, you know, in the middle of, of you know, rendering this thing down and, and uploading it. Is I'm probably gonna search through the library some more and see if I can find any more cool hidden gems. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. Uh, I, I played Ten Yard Fight, <laughs> which is a classic arcade game where uh, it's football in one of its. We it's 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 such a weird like representation of just regular football where there's only like there's only like seven players on the field which obviously isn't enough and uh and just the way the game runs down it, it's 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 all based on timing because they give you a time limit and you're just they you know the the opposing team kicks off to you and you're just supposed to try to score a touchdown before you run out of time and you know see how many points you can score before your timer hits zero and and it's uh but you get, you know, you get, you try to get, you know, first downs, and every time you get a first down, it, it, it puts 10 seconds, you know, back on the clock, and, but if you don't get a first down, then the, the clock doesn't replenish, and, uh, you know, however many more downs it takes you to get a first down, when you actually do get one, it puts less time on the clock, so if it takes you, like, three downs to do it, then you only get, like, you know, four or six seconds back on the clock instead of 10, and so it's, it's kind of a cool little thing, but, just the way that the way that you know the like the sound effects for it and the way that the the players handle is so awkward and gross, but it's so much fun. It, it's just like you know how like how kind of super bad the game handles, but it it also makes it so much more fun because you have to try so much harder to be like okay, I've got to find like a system to make this work out for me because the game is so it, the game is limited. In, in you know the way you can do input so you have to kind of find a you have to find kind of a special way to, to beat the game's AI you know in order to make it work for you and it, it, it a lot of those older games operate that way you just you have to find 
you have to find kind of like a rhythm, you know, of making certain things happen. It's kind of like another, there's another arcade game called Timber that uh, you're, you basically take on a, a lumberjack and you're just operating in this kind of square field area and you have to cut down X amount of trees before the time runs out. And it's another game that's entirely based off of rhythm, you know? Because when you when you run up to a tree that sprouts out of the ground like a fucking crazy ass weed, um, it takes like it takes either you know four actual swings to knock it down, or you can do like two and then run into the tree and nudge it over. And so it's it's all and then in like the later levels you'll get to the point where like two or three of them are popping up at once, and you have to you have to run and do it real quick. And it all just turns into like this crazy, you know, reflexes and it's like a reflex and just rhythm exercise of when you get up to the tree, you know, which way are you going to do it? Are you going to do the four shots real quick? Or are you going to do the two and then nudge it? And it's all just about like you, you kind of almost disconnect for a minute. You know, you're, you almost stop thinking about it and you just you just kind of just go into this zone where you're just completely like locked into the game itself it's it's kind of hard to explain but i feel like you know certain people will get what i'm saying like it just you know what i mean you know it's just it, it is what it is <laughs> i don't know it, it's late and i'm tired and and i'm probably not even really making sense on a lot of these things but you know it, it's maybe maybe all the fucking haze from all the forest fires here in oregon and the weird lightning that we had earlier and the fact that i'm just tired in general because <laughs> it's you know almost one in the morning is kind of fueling some of my you know lack of sensical conversation here but it is what it is we got 10 10 easy points out of that this should be a very easy tournament for us to win and maybe help get our win percentage back up in good standing there after we took a couple of losses in quick succession there so I think we're gonna save right here this seems like a pretty good place to do that and uh, when we come back on the next installment of Let's Play Gran Turismo 3, The Ultimate Driving Simulator, it's going to be episode 100, by the way. I just realized that. Holy shit. It's going to be triple digits, man. It'll be, what, only only the second series I've ever done uh, that I've you know been able to eclipse 100 episodes in, and in, <laughs> we're well on our way of totally obliterating what we did in Gran Turismo 2. So, my friends... It is nice to be back. It was great to, to be able to chat with you while we totally wipe the floor with a couple of races. And when we come back, we'll have more stuff to talk about. I got a actually a pretty cool story lined up for episode 100. It was something else. So with that said, my friends, this is your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza, saying thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye.